Well, hello, good morning, and welcome to Freedom Homestead. My name is Tangi, and I'm really pumped about today's video because this is something that I've been wanting to share with you all, and that is rendering beef tallow. What makes your garden grow water and sunshine? What makes your spirit grow knowing that should be mine? So if you've been following us for more than a few weeks, you know that we recently got a steer. Um, we had a friend that raised it and then it was processed and it is now nestled in our deep freeze. But I was sure to ask the processor to reserve some of the fat for me so that way I could make beef tallow, which is what we are gonna be doing today. Before we get into it, I wanted to talk just a little bit about some of the benefits of tallow what it is and um, yeah, because I know that a lot of you will probably be thinking, uh, like for example, I thought that tallow would be bad for you and it's bad for your heart. There's a movie that I grew up watching called Willow. It has Val Kilmer in it. It's a fantastic movie, you should watch it. Um, but there is a, a part in the movie where the guy says, Forget all you know, or think you know. If you subscribe to the idea that uh, animal fats are bad for you, then I would highly encourage you to do your research and forget all you know or think you know. So um, with that said, uh, some of the benefits of tallow is that one, it is high, and I wrote this down because I knew I would probably forget it, um, conjugated, conjugated linoleic acid which actually helps you to burn fat. Who knew that fat could help you to burn fat, but it's true. Um, also, tallow is rich in minerals and vitamins. Vitamins being A, D, E, and K. And also, I believe selenium is one of the minerals that it's high in, and I can't remember what the other ones were. Tallow is also a stable fat, which means that it will not go rancid quickly. You can leave it out on your countertop, um, and it will it will stay nice and delicious and not go rancid on you. Now, how I store mine is, and you'll see this, um, I put my uh, tallow in very clean, sterile jars, and um, I put it in there really hot, so that way when the, um, as the fat cools, it will have a vacuum effect and it will seal, the jar will seal. And so that's what I do. And then I store it down in my basement where it is dark and cool. Our basement is um, temperature controlled, but because it is a basement, it does tend to stay cooler down there than it does up here. And then I have my um, extended pantry down there, which stays dark most of the time. So um, that is how I store mine. And if you want to put it in the freezer, if that makes you feel better, you can do that but it's really not necessary. Tallow also supports your immune system by helping you to absorb fat-soluble vitamins. These fats are super important in our diet, and um, yeah, just do your own research, see if it gives you the warm fuzzies. So how can you use tallow? Um, tallow has a very high smoke point, and so you can use it for deep frying, you can use it for sauteing, you can use it, um, you can use it to uh, season your cast iron. I'm actually, uh, I've got some sourdough bread dough rising, and um, when I get ready to put it in my pans, I'm actually going to butter my pans using the tallow. Because tallow is a hard fat, a lot of folks like to use it for soaps and candles. Um, and also because the type of fat that it is and because of its nutrient density, it is also perfect for using as a skin cream. You can use it as a body butter, lotion, um, all different kinds of stuff. It's just, it's, a, it's amazing. It's a superfood. It's a superfood. Okay, now you know why I want to use it, how I'm going to use it. Now let's talk about how we're actually going to make it. So let's get in the kitchen and let's do this thing. Okay, so this is roughly 9.11 pounds of fat. There is some meat on there that I'm gonna try to trim off, but I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Um, so we're gonna get this cubed up and put into our slow cooker. 
y'all these allergies are kicking my tail so hopefully you can hear me and understand me with my crazy voice uh, but what I'm doing here is I'm just cleaning up the fat I'm trimming off as much muscle meat as I can then I'm chunking up the fat and throwing it into the slow cooker and setting the slow cooker to low Okay, y'all, it has definitely been a few hours. You can see we have some beautiful tallow here. Um, and I have been coming here and trying to stir this as much as possible. About six hours later, I felt like the tallow was ready to strain off because the chunks of fat had shrunk down but I was also I also wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to burn or stick to the bottom so here you can see I'm just ladling the tallow out of the pot and I'm running it through a strainer into a large bowl now if you want to strain this off into a cheesecloth or a flour sack tea towel you can certainly do that but I really don't think it's necessary it just depends on what you want the uh, tallow for. If you plan on using it for soap making, candle making, uh, anything like that, then you might want to go ahead and strain it through a tea towel or a cheesecloth. But if you're going to be using this for eating, I really don't think it's necessary. Now it's time to pour your tallow into your jars and you want to make sure that your jars are clean that your lids are clean and I poured the hot tallow into the jar I put the lid and the band on and sealed it and then what happens is as the tallow cools it will create a vacuum effect that will seal the jar and as I mentioned before uh, tallow is a shelf stable fat it will not go rancid very easily and so it is safe to keep uh, in a cool dark area I'm keeping mine down in the basement um, but if it makes you feel more comfortable you can certainly freeze it just make sure that you leave yourself enough headspace so your jar doesn't break um, you can also put it in a refrigerator now that we're down to the bottom of the bowl here in just a moment I'm going to show you but there are some solids at the bottom because I didn't strain it through a mesh strainer so you can see it there so what I'm doing is I'm just pouring it through a finer mesh strainer and trying not to get the bits in there it's not a huge deal if they do get into your tallow but just for a cleaner tallow I did not want that in there so I'm trying very carefully to pour the tallow into the jar and not let that get into it if it does no big deal just personal preference oh the pretty blue all right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it helpful. And remember, until next time, be vigilant, be prayerful, and be prepared. And we'll catch you in the next one.